Hello and welcome to the Slumbering Sloth Book Nook, a podcast about all things books, publishing and more. My name is Emma and today my guest is Rob Chilver. Rob is a digital marketing manager at Headline Books. Now before we get started, please take the time to like and subscribe to our channel on YouTube or you can write us a review on Apple Podcasts. It will really help our podcast to grow. Now on with the show. Thank you for coming on the podcast today, Rob. It's a pleasure. Thank you for asking. Yes. Oh, you're very welcome. So first things first, um, can you tell us about your current role? So my current role, I suppose my job title, I am a digital marketing manager here at Headline Books. Um, there's six of us in the marketing team. And my day-to-day role, actually, we were only just sort of trying to iron this out yesterday, funnily enough. Um I'm responsible for the marketing of uh, certain titles that I'm given. I also get to sort of oversee some of the more uh, digitally led side of books. So if you were going to see things like Facebook ads or a Twitter account or I mean, I was doing some Snapchat the other day, uh, that kind of all comes um, under my overview for things like that. Very awesome. So would you say like your job very day to day kind of varies in different campaigns and different stuff going on all the time yes I would say so so uh, no day is the same that's very easy to say Uh, I spend a lot of time actually looking out for new things to try new things to play around with you know I'm always in the app store what how can I use this new app to possibly uh, talk to people or video or something like that so um, I get to work on all my own books as well, but if there's one of the perks is if there's a big exciting book that one of my colleagues is is working on, uh, I can say, oh, uh, you know, I, I fancy doing this. Uh, should we give it a go? And uh, one of the things I always asked was, I need to have permission to fail. If you're not trying something new, then you tend to end up being rather safe. So it's always fun to try something new and cross your fingers and, and see what happens. Yeah, because I guess the digital space is a little place where you can sort of experiment with different types of marketing or publicity campaigns or anything like that. So I definitely think digital has allowed that to happen. Mm. Well, I everyone, I didn't want to be like the go-to digital guy in my team. You know, everyone should be doing their own sort of Facebook and Twitter stuff. Um boring if all I was doing was setting up ads for everyone so I kind of help everyone do that but yeah it's it's trying out something new and also there's so much stuff now going on trying to get someone to sort of pause their Twitter feed and look at something is actually really quite hard so whether it's going to be something funny or eye-catching or we're trying to see something new um, it certainly keeps me on my toes and I one of the jobs I sort of get given is I have to go out and find new people to work with or agencies or you know when you are doing a long-running crime series and you're 20 books in it's like well how do you make it different to the 19 other books but without like breaking it you kind of it needs to be familiar but also it needs to be new so it's kind of a fun role I get to be quite creative and just sort of try stuff out Um, and obviously with digital you, you also get that like immediate feedback so if you're going through London and you see a tune and go, oh, that's interesting, I'll look at that book. But we don't really know how many people have seen that ad in the paper or have seen that tube poster and then gone out and bought the book. Whereas on digital, I can tell you like how many people saw it, how many people clicked on it, and in theory, how many people then went to buy the book, which is nice when it works really well. But then if you get something that doesn't work, you're kind of like, ah, okay no I need to go out somehow and go and fix it so there's pluses and minuses but yeah getting trying out new things is a lot of fun uh but it can be a little bit scary as well when it doesn't work yeah and there's always going to be a place for traditional marketing um Mm. posters and and all sorts because there's there are definitely ads that you see on the tube or even like in bus stops or something with a book like on a poster and it does catch your eye um even i think bookshops have a massive role to play in that as well because they're very creative with how they like want to market a book um so i think there's definitely always going to be a place for that traditional media because you're not going to reach everyone because not everybody is online so if there's a particular audience i guess you want to go for like 
you know, that maybe only read the newspaper or, like, you know, watch TV or, you know, don't really use or engage, I guess it's a great way to sort of still reach yeah. those people. Well, the, the budgets aren't high enough usually to do TV. I mean, that's one thing in, about, about books is the budgets aren't high. But, yeah, this old saying, like, you need to see something three times before you sort of decide to buy it or something like that. So uh, newspapers and actually radio works really well. Uh, well uh, they are great at telling people that this book is out. If this book is out now or it's coming out. And you've also, um, like you said, bookshops, the the really good like window displays that like Waterstones and some of the independents do are really important at actually getting you to stop in the street and see it. And it's also kind of like a stamp of authority, like this is an important book. You should be, we've, we've all put in the time and effort to do a window or, or a newspaper ad or something like that. So, yeah, it's all about now we've got a really good idea of who who a book is for and where we can reach them. So I've done newspaper ads and then combined them with digital and podcasts. So you're kind of like managing to reach much wider people um, sort of across that back, across that sort of stretch of land, so to speak, uh, with a combination of things. So yeah, the, the newspaper adverts, especially as newspaper reviewing is going, the space for newspaper reviews is going down. Um, having that ad is still really important and I'm already briefing some in for like November and Christmas already so even though I've got digital in my job title I still get to do the old-fashioned sort of things and it's kind of cool actually when you do a print ad and you see it in the paper yourself I do keep them myself actually as a little um, sort of uh, sort of like it's called a scrapbook so yeah they're not going to go away anytime soon. That's cool so kind of like moving on um, how did you sort of get into publishing and what is your publishing journey well I've got a bit of a, a long story I'm not sure so I did uh, English literature at university I then went on to do a master's and the day after I handed in my dissertation for my master's I sort of took myself into town so I come from Colchester which is a town in Essex and um, sort of just wandering around thinking, oh my God, like I'm, I'm not thinking about Sam and Rushdie 24 hours a day now, like I was doing my dissertation on. Happened to pop into Waterstones and saw that they were doing a Christmas temp job. I applied for it, uh, thinking that would keep me busy till the January. Uh, they kept me on. And I was at Waterstones for about seven years. Ended up going from the shop floor to head office where I was looking after the blog and the social media and kind of choosing sometimes which books we would pick. Uh, then Waterstone sort of went through a bit of a, a change and four of us got made redundant. But I ended up a headline about a month later and I've been there now three years, I think it's coming to. So I think a part of that was, and I know one of your jobs is like, one of your questions is a bit like a side hustle. When I was book selling, I got into like blogging and I started doing a podcast and I was sort of very much, um, I had so much time at work that I was talking about books with customers that when I finished work, I was like, well, I want to carry on talking about books. I want to carry on recommending them. So that's when I sort of started blogging and podcasting. And I think that helped me get into the head office position and it made me enough sort of friends and networking that when I was looking for work, thankfully, uh, someone said, hey, why don't you come and join Headline as a marketing manager? And um, here I am. So uh, three years now at Headline, um, and I've become, I've gone from marketing to digital marketing because that was kind of my stronger point. Uh, but yeah, I didn't do all the, I do sometimes wish that I'd done the marketing assistant, like, gone up the ladder, because it was a bit of a, uh, a leap into the unknown for me. And I had to, I'd say I'm still learning, but I'm also still always going to be a bookseller because I'm always pushing books onto people. Um, but it's, yeah, it's it's strange being at times the other side of the publishing sort of cycle. I'm at the start now uh, and not at the end. Mm. Yeah, of course. Um, so obviously with your role, honestly, I know we talked a bit about we kind of t- combined two things together at once. Mm. Um, what kind of 
uh, sort of key skills would you say for someone wanting to be wanting to work in, say, the digital marketing or marketing sphere? What would you say, like, the, say the key, the top three key skills you think are the most important to sort of succeed in your role? Uh, so you don't have to be. The, I don't think you have to be the finished article. You always because, as I said before, there's always these new uh, sort of apps or, or platforms coming out. So you don't. Have to, I wouldn't worry too much if you if you've never been on TikTok or Snapchat or whatever, because um, you you can learn on the job. But I think having an awareness of the best places and the best sort of methods of selling books. So definitely be on Twitter and having that conversation about books. You get to know the people and it's a fantastic networking tool. Uh, I had a weird thing when I walked in the door at Headline where everyone sort of knew who I was through Twitter, but I was basically squinting going do they look like their profile picture mm. I think they do uh but you all you always feel like you already know some um my wife actually did the same sort of thing where she left teaching to go into marketing and she started um as marketing assistant but that's exactly what she was doing was she was talking to people on twitter she had an awareness of like the book trade and what's going on uh and all the publicists on twitter are all very friendly and talking about their books so having an awareness of the digital space, I mean, uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram are the main ones that we use, but we all use them in different ways. Twitter is much more conversational and almost fast paced, where uh, fast paced, where things hang around on Facebook a lot longer. So I'd say the first thing is having that awareness of the people in publishing. So you get to know people. And you never know when someone might go, oh, I saw that person on Twitter and I need an assistant for something. Maybe you, know, you, want, you want your name to be sort of familiar. Um, the second thing is I was doing uh, blogging to start off with and then podcast. I know now BookTube is, is very much um, the, the sort of the in thing now. I, I, I might dabble my toe a bit in BookTube. Uh, but basically showing that you're you've an interest in books uh that you're you don't have to be well read as in widely read but if you're really into your sci-fi or fantasy then but just knowing a lot about that area uh can really help you if that's the area you want to go into uh obviously at waterstones i was reading sort of like the waterstones books i was like in air quotes there were certain ones that waterstones always pushed and actually headline is a bit more um sort of commercial than that but I kind of knew about them so that helps so uh you could do a book journal like you treat it as a book sort of showing that um when someone applies to publishing we get inundated like with all the entry-level jobs we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of, of applicants for that entry-level job anything that you can do that will make you stand out so if you've got a creative side you know bookstagram if you're doing or you're doing some, you know, like interesting reviews. It all helps in standing out. Um, it's kind of hard, I'm afraid, and I do feel for people who are trying to uh, get in at the door. But um, the sheer number of people that we get is actually amazing. That there are people so passionate about getting into books. Um, so I say, yeah, play around with the platforms, show off that your enthusiasm. Um, the third thing, I mean, you know, you're doing all right with a podcast right now. So, uh, uh, after, um, just, yeah, talking to people and networking. And I know it's really hard if you live outside London, uh, but certainly getting on Twitter and talking about things is the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Because, like, as you said, it's hard to first, you know, especially if you live outside, way outside London, like me, uh, <laughs> I live on practically yeah. the countryside. Yeah. Um, you, I created this as like a not like you know created it as like a way to sort of network or you know mm. a need to you know talk to people because it's really good to try and also speak to other people um because it's good for other people to hear what other publishing people do so it's almost great to get that information out there um sometimes creating your own content I think can have have a, have a massive more impactful experience sometimes as well mm. so you're creating your own kind of work experience yes um so we we do have work experience here but uh it's quite tricky to get a lot done in like the two weeks mm. plus there's the issue of obviously uh london uh, you know uh, canongate are in edinburgh but everything is in london 
and actually as a company I know has are working really hard to sort of um, to try and fix that so we're thinking about doing regional offices we're also there's a thing that you can do it's called the spare room project where if you do get some work in London there are people here who have a spare room who will help you put you who will help put you up and you know you have to spend a small fortune trying to get here every day uh, so that's kind of like the face-to-face, I suppose, work experience. But if you've kind of already got like a, a portfolio or something, you know, and that can just easily be like a really good Instagram or a, or a book blog or a podcast or whatever, then that all helps. And it kind of like, certainly when I was blogging, um, if, I, if I went back and looked now, my book reviews would probably be very different to what I was doing now. I think you do kind of, you kind of learn and it's, it's practicing, um, when I was doing the first ever podcast, it ended up being with me and my wife. We did it for five years. I was absolutely terrified before I did it. It was my idea to do a podcast, and I thought, uh, yeah, let's do it. But uh, she'd done student radio, and I sound absolutely terrified by the time I did it. It um, helped me in a way that I got used to talking about books. Uh, it helped me with like presentations when I had to go in and do it. Um, so now, luckily, because I've been doing, I was doing podcasts for like five years, it helped me practice talking about books, structuring an argument like in a book review. Uh, I'm, I still get nervous, which is good because I, it shows that I still care. But now I'm a, a bit more comfortable like presenting to people who are senior to me or trying to convince an author to sign with us or present my plan. Like, this is what I'd like to do for your book. So uh, it's all really helpful, really good practice. And it will help you in any job, actually. But talking about books, when you kind of like figure out what you want to say and how you want to say it, uh, all gives you like a bit of an advantage when you actually get there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so sort of finally, um, what is a book that you have read recently that you would like to sort of recommend? Uh, I'm going to cheat a bit slightly because uh, it's one of my favourite books and it's the one that I always used to push onto people when I was a bookseller um whenever someone would come up to me in the shop floor and they'd ask me that brilliant question like I don't know what I want to read or I'm going on holiday uh what book should I read and this is always the one that I went to uh and it's uh The Secret History by Donna Tartt now there is a film coming out of her third novel but for me The Secret History um it's one of those fantastic books where I probably read it at the perfect time and it's the story of a guy called Richard who ends up going to some of a kind of an elite um, university in America. But you find out from the world he's been murdered. So it becomes um, more of a why done it than a who done it. But I got to read this actually at university when I was in this sort of very tiny American literature class. And it, it just sort of resonated with me uh, throughout the whole thing. And it's really well done. And it's a first person narrative, but it's one of those ones where you're not quite sure if you're trusting the narrator or not. Uh, everyone who uh, recommended it to has thankfully agreed agreed with me. Um, but like I said, there's a film version of Donna Tartt's third book that's coming out with Nicole Kidman in about September. The Goldfinch I would also recommend as well. But The Secret History is one of those books where I'm not sure how the film version would, would um, end up, but if you either read it or you listen to it as an audio I would thoroughly recommend it I'm not sure how much more I can say without spoiling it uh, at this point I'll be putting it to someone's hands and just saying go buy it just and then come back to come back to me in six weeks and I will tell you and we can have a good geek out about it yeah definitely I think I also really wanted to kind of read the goldfinch but it's such a big book to tackle at the, at Ooh, the moment yeah. so I think I might just leave that one for until I after graduation <laughs> And I'm worried about the Goldfinch film because it's such a big book and I don't know how you're going to get it down to like two and a half, three hours. Uh, but once I got started with that one, luckily I had a sort of a proof and it was um, kind of like a hypnotic experience when you kind of go in. Uh, I've not read Donna Tartt's second book and I hear varying things about that one. And I feel like if I read a bad Donna Tartt book, that might put me off. Plus she only brings out a book like every 10 years uh so uh i'm eagerly awaiting anything that comes next but um i recommend the goldfinch but i'd say read secret history first and then go read the goldfinch yeah. or listen to it actually they're brilliant actually on audiobooks as well yep definitely i'll i'll give those a uh write those down <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on today i really appreciate it
Thank you. Um, good luck to anyone who is thinking of entering the busy world of publishing. Uh, if uh, Can I give a shout out for my Twitter if anyone wants to ask me any questions? Yeah, um, absolutely. So I am at Rob Chilva on Twitter, Instagram, and at one point I was that on Snapchat. But yeah, those are the two main places where I uh, talk about books. Um, I talk about what I'm working on or actually having a uh, having a wife that works in publishing, we do share a lot of books as well. So there's a lot of back and forth going on. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much for having me. You're very welcome. Take care. Bye. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks for listening. You can follow Rob on Twitter at Rob Chilver. If you'd like to get involved with the podcast, you can get in touch through Twitter at NovelM16 and use the hashtag Softcast. Or you can send me an email at slumberysothbooknick at gmail.com. You can also find our podcast on our YouTube channel, Slumbery Sloth Booknick, or download from Podbean and Apple Podcasts for an on-the-go experience. See you next week. Bye.